MJ. I'm going to say this one final time. From one secretary to another. You should know better than to keep trying to contact my boss while he is on an important vacation. Your boss has been informed of this perfectly reasonable pause to our dealings, and you should have done your best to reassure her that everything will continue smoothly once we have returned to the office. That is part of your role. We are not only personal assistants, but therapists. Everything will be fine, but it will be fine next week. Uh, if you call this number again before our return date, I will not answer, but I will let your landlord know that you're keeping multiple cats in your pet-free apartment. Good day, and tell your sister I send my warmest congratulations on her new baby. Good morning, sir. Your robe is over there hanging by the fireplace. I'm afraid your coffee is taking longer to brew than I expected on that small stove burner. Oh, did you think you were sneaking up on me? Certainly not, sir. Not only do you walk like a bear, but one side effect of being in a subservient position is that you become keenly aware of the energetic presence of your master. You can tell their very essence is in the room with you, and it makes your skin tingle. From fear, or from something else. <sighs> that phone call? It was nothing. Sir, I said it was nothing. You are not here to do work. Work is what you do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, back in the big, powerful city. But need I remind you to look around again? The big, powerful city is not where we are. So unless it's a call from your soon-to-be ex-wife, then any and all contacts are not your concern. You are simply a man in a cabin in the forest, in, admittedly, the middle of nowhere. With so little cell service, I'm amazed I have to continue doing the big city aspects of my job out here. Those other secretaries certainly are resourceful. Hmm. Very much the middle of nowhere. Well, lovely. It's not Aspen. Oh, no, 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 I'm not disappointed at all at your choice of getaway. It's rustic, charming. I was just a bit confused as to why you wanted to come to this property. As far as I saw in the books, it's one you inherited and do the minimum to maintain yearly. I even saw that the last time you came out to this small mountain town was ten years back when you were given ownership of the cabin and surrounding acres. That was really before my time. But I did happen to find a cufflink under that armchair that matches the solo one you keep with that stoic black suit hidden in the back of your closet in the penthouse. Beautiful, if somewhat unique, cufflinks. Hmm. A button carved in the shape of an acorn. I imagine it was attached to this silver post after its life as a garment fastener was over. Oh, and you look pleased that I found it. I'll happily hand it over then. There you go. If I may be honest, sir, I'm surprised you let me come here with you. It's unsettlingly like going behind the Wizard of Oz's curtain after years of working in the Emerald City. <laughs> These pictures on the wall. This older woman is quite lovely. And you look adorable, holding up your catch of the day. I didn't even know you could fish. <laughs> Was she your grandmother? She looks strong and wise. The sort of woman I very much would have liked to meet. I have noticed touches around the cabin that reminded me of a feminine hand in the building process. The mosaics in the bathroom, the beautiful carvings included on the railing outside. 
motifs of sunflowers and moons are beautifully childlike. And they relay an intrinsic connection to nature that makes me wonder at the solitary joy of the person who lived in this cabin. This is a home. Sure, the penthouses and apartments in a city can also be home, but I've never quite seen a place so saturated with the personality of a human being. It's raw and warm. And not unlike a worn baby's blanket. <laughs> I know you don't like me questioning you or bringing up your decisions. <laughs> but are you quite certain you want me to see this? I know you are probably struggling foundationally with everything that's been going on with your relationship with your... Well, with, you know, but bringing me here and exposing me to what feels like the bottled essence of your childhood is uncharacteristically open, and I want to make sure that I am not crossing a boundary you are not protecting, because you are alone and unsupported in a way for the first time in many, many years. Sometimes the adrenaline of unwelcome change can force intimate secrets to leak out, and... You trust me. Well, that's certainly nice to hear. I would hope that after my years of service, all kinds of service, that you would have a certain confidence in me and my confidence. It's nice to know that you appreciate my competence and discretion. It was a welcome bout of laughter the other day when your eyes went wide watching me chop wood fairly well. And no, I am sorry to remind you that I cannot still fit into my Girl Scout uniform. Such a tragedy, I'm sure, when we have so many other little costumes to play in. To return to the point, I will reiterate, though, that I would never dream of telling anyone about this place that you hold dear. I would never. Oh. You meant that you <clears throat> wanted me to come here with you and experience this place because you wanted me to understand you more deeply to broaden our relationship. You are aware that up until now there have been strict, unspoken guidelines to how we interact. Boss and secretary. Master and servant. Of course, I know all sorts of things about you that you never intended for me to find out, but that is the nature of the job. I'm not disappointed at this sweet vacation, this trip down memory lane, but I am hesitant to understand how to behave. <laughs> at my sister's engagement party, all I knew how to do was network and help run things behind the scenes. We in the cutthroat world of business affix our masks very securely, do we not? Here, faced with the very real reality of your middle school yearbook, filled with well wishes from children next to me every time I sit down on the couch, I... Well, I've lost my rule book on how to communicate. I thought perhaps this was all a momentary weakness. <laughs> but to know that you intentionally wanted me to experience this is... kind of wonderful. If emotionally terrifying. <laughs> ah, mm, there's your coffee. <laughs> Then all I will say, before we can properly get the day started and attend to our leisurely agenda, is... Thank you. And... If 
you ever want to. When I was in middle school. <laughs> My best friends used to call me Lala. <laughs> so, you can too, if you ever wish. <laughs> Sorry, that was silly. Oh, goodness, I'm coming. Relax. You're worse than the people on Wall Street. 